want to go back to, to Jay Powell just for a minute. One quote a lot of people are keying in on. He says, we're navigating by the stars under cloudy skies today, looking at the CME FedWatch tool, 80% chance of a pause. How did you interpret what he said? And, and what do you think about not only the next meeting coming up in a few weeks, but the last three meetings in total? What are you expecting? I think he's going to stay higher for longer. Uh, at, but the environment's very murky. You've got decelerating growth in China. That's going to be a big, uh, big issue going forward that could affect our, our, uh, our economy. And uh, I think he's basically you know, citing that uh, it, it, it's, it's cloudy and the clouds are perhaps getting a little thicker, but we're still uh, on a course. To, we're still going to stay the course because I really do believe that uh, – Getting inflation down, in particular, the stickier components of infl inflation, is the number one goal of the Fed. And I don't think they're going to stop until they feel comfortable that they've uh, put the inflation okay. gene back in the bottle. Wait, Dan, I want to be clear. When you say stop, so you think there might be another hike this year, or you're just saying higher for longer, which is basically what Jay Powell said? I mean, I think you, you can't uh, rule out the possibility of one or two more hikes, but I think he's he's pretty much done. Uh, I think the bulk of the work is done because now we're real rates are, you know, two to three percent right now, adjusting for inflation. That's that's probably pretty restrictive in their uh, in their mind. All right. So unlike a lot of people in the market, you believe him when he says higher for longer. So with that in mind, you're saying there's a few metrics that are increasingly important under this higher rate environment. One of them is forward P.E. Now, I'm looking at the Magnificent Seven. Since the start of August, when the 10-year went above 4%, the Magnificent Seven, we're talking NVIDIA to Alphabet, that's actually underperformed the broader market. So is this why you're saying that, that P.E. is so important right now? Is that valuation is really the story at the, at the, for the back half of the year? Yeah, I mean, I think NVIDIA is a great case in point. What could they have possibly said more that would have gotten incremental buyers to come into NVIDIA's shares at their most recent earnings. You could say that for many of the tech companies, tech earnings were very good, but you know valuations are so high, where are you gonna get that incremental buyer to come into these stocks? I think that's the overriding issue. It's not that these stocks are gonna collapse, <clears throat> but they could just go sideways for an extended period of time. That money is gonna go elsewhere where it's finding better valuations. So in your mind, that's the confirmation that investors are more concerned about valuation, what we saw from NVIDIA. Great report, that's blockbuster right. report, uh, mm -hmm. rallied after the report in the pre-market, but at the end of the day, it basically closed flat. And Friday it was lower. So, I mean, this right. is where you're getting sort of uh, the, the, uh, the fundamentals colliding with valuation at this point. And valuation is, 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 is taking a front okay. seat, given how high interest rates are. All right, you actually have a few picks for us. They're in the material sector, which is, you know, deeply underperformed this year. So give us a sense very quickly, why these picks, why are they good picks right now in this environment? Well, look, both of these companies are check writers. They have uh, the ultimate flexibility of controlling their own destiny. They can buy stock back if that's opportunistic. They can pay dividends. Mostly, uh, they can make acquisitions that could be highly strategic to their business models. And many, both of these companies have stayed on the sidelines for a while because they felt valuation prices for acquisitions were simply too high. Uh, so uh, I think these companies are both really well positioned. Amatech, a multi-industry industrial company with exposure to uh, a lot of different uh, broad end markets that are seeing a real growth, has committed to spending uh, a lot of their excess cash into M&A and their free cash flow. Uh, uh, okay. Applied Industrial Technologies is debt-free, also has very flexible balance sheet to either buy stock back or also make acquisitions.